Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of What a Horse I Am, here with my good buddy, Jerry Williams. Yes. It's, yes, it's time. It's time to go to commercial. <laughs> no, it, no it, it's time. It, we we right on the celebration. Oh, yeah, it is. But you're yeah. right. We, we do have to go to commercial before we get to, I'm yeah. going to let him do, do what he's supposed to do. Go ahead. <laughs> we'll be right back after all these wonderful commercials we've been to have. <laughs> Jake Jacobs asks for your support as he rides for the roses on brain power in the amateur counter class at the 84th Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety, and JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Allie Doe Jacobs is heading in the 84th Walking Horse Celebration where she asked for your support in the Youth Country Pleasure Division seated on the first night out. Ali Jo will then be showing her riding skills in the Youth 11 and Under Equitation Division aboard AT Grant. Ali Jo and friends ask for your support during this year's celebration. Every year, thousands of people come together in Shelbyville, Tennessee to celebrate the greatest horse in the world by naming world champions and world grand champion Tennessee walking horses in multiple divisions. Join us this year for the 84th annual Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration, featuring 198 classes starting August 24th and continuing through September 3rd, when the world grand champion Tennessee walking horse will be crowned. Contact the celebration today at 931 6 845915 and reserve your seats. Then come out and enjoy five days and ten nights of the best of the best Tennessee walking horses competing for top honors. Remember the winner's circle. You got the gift shop, you got knives, you English saddles and accessories, English and cutback, Western and Trooper saddles and accessories, complete line attack bits, spurs, training aids, stable supplies, grooming medication, horse clothing, riding apparel, accessories, and footwear. While you're in town, go down to Winter Circle and tell them what a horse sent you. Please stand and cheer for the team of I Am Uno and Jake Jacobs in the Amateur Park Performance Division of the 2022 Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> you know that 198 classes, that ain't exactly right. We got a lot of splits. Yeah, we got a lot of splits. <laughs> I'm just wondering how many, because <clears throat> Tuesday was last day to enter your yes. horses, mm -hmm. Futurity and Celebration. So I, I'm just wondering what these numbers are going to be. You know, at least in two-year-old class, you have three different splits in it. I know. So, so you know, it'll be a lot of different more classes. Hey, I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, 
I'm looking forward to it. That, so we know we're going to go over 200 classes. Yeah, that's right. We keep on. We might get on up to a bunch. That's I just I was looking at an old paper talking about the back in 1994 how many people came to the fun show, and and how many horses entered. There's over 500 horses entered, and uh, I, I forget all the figures, but it was. I'm hoping that we go back there. Yeah, I want to too. go back. To what the celebration used to be, really the fun show would kind of give you an idea. Yeah, yeah. But normally it was four or five times the number of horses at the celebration. Is that the you exactly right at about the fun that. show? So mm -hmm. I'm hoping it, I'm hoping it explodes myself. Me too. You uh, we're talking about this year's celebration and the way that uh, int the uh, inspections have gone. I. I uh, went back and brought up a video that we had done about the proper palpation and things to look for. And everybody always wondered, you know, worried about the thumbnail going down into the pocket. But there's other things that you need to watch for. And I want everybody to listen to this video because it explains the palpation very well. Here we go. According to the HPA and the USDA training manual, the proper way to palpate a horse is by pressing down with the pad of your thumb until the thumbnail blanches. This technique, according to the USDA, applies the correct amount of pressure to a horse's limb. Any other method, such as using the tip of your thumb or the first joint, is viewed as intentionally causing the horse to move by applying pressure of bone to bone. As seen in this video, when using the proper palpation method, the horse doesn't move. But by applying the tip of the thumb or the first joint, the bone-on-bone -bone pressure will cause a reaction by the horse. As long as he does it the correct way, that horse won't move. But if he turns up and hits bone-on-bone -bone with that finger, you're going to, he's going to move every time. Well, so, them horses have a certain nerve that's yeah. in that foot, too. And the people, and you, if you know where that nerve is, you can push on that nerve hard enough and make that horse move. Oh, yeah. And they, these are things that... We all need to think about during this year's celebration. I'd even talk to some because the, the USDA hadn't come to hardly any of our shows. They came to the trainer's show for two nights. First night we were back there videoing and everything, I mean, everything's smooth. I mean, they, was, they found one, maybe two violations. The DQPs did, but we decided, you know, I, I told, him, I said, there's no sense in me videoing this because they, they're doing their job the way it's supposed yes. to be. So next night we did not. And then for some reason, everything got out of whack. The next night it was a little overboard. And there, there's reasons for that. I, I thought back to when they would refuse to let us video. They ran Channel 5 out from videoing. If once we did get permission to video, we had to do it from the outside, and then they would stand in front of our cameras so we could not see what was going on like that. And that was one of the reasons that led to us getting the video law passed to where if anybody's inspecting your animals, no matter what it is, horse, cow, chicken, duck, make no difference, you had the right to video. Yes. And the first time that we videoed a show to where we could actually video them, we caught them turning the thumb up and digging in the pocket. So this year, I'm, I'm just suggesting to people that you take steps to protect yourself. Yeah, that's right. Now, personally, and I was saying if I was going to show a horse, I'd have a VMO, not a VMO, but a veterinarian, an actual equine veterinarian, inspect that horse before I ever carried it to the celebration. Years ago, the celebration before one of our shows had DQPs out there that were actual veterinarians, licensed veterinarians, checking horses. They led them up there and they were still turning some of them down. So now, from what I've seen, to be a VMO, you don't have to be a veterinarian. So in, in all honesty, when you get get down to it and you look at it, our DQPs have just as much knowledge as those VMOs. Yes. Now, I'm not saying none that all of them are not veterinarians, but I am saying that I do not believe all of them are. And, and that has to do with their uh, 
applications when they asked you to, to be a, a VMO, that wasn't listed as a requirement. Uh, veterinarian experience uh, was, was mentioned in one of them, but you can get that by working with a veterinarian. So you don't have to be a veterinarian to get that experience. So what I'm saying is RDQPs do a super job. And they have found violations this year because, in all honesty, there's going to be violators in every sport. Oh, you yes, know that. You're you exactly right. And I just think our veterinarian, our DQPs have done a great job. So my suggestion is let a licensed veterinarian check your horse and then let him go to the show. If something's wrong, you still got the fact that you had that horse inspected before you ever carried him to the celebration. Be quite frank, I, I cannot see anybody taking one up there that's out. That, that they know that's out. out. That's right. I mean, it's uh, like, how many horses are you taking to celebration this year? I think I think about 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Out of them 14, I'm sure you're going to check out. I know how picky you are yeah. about making sure all of them got the proper bath and everything. But would you take one of them up there if you knew he wasn't out? No, you ain't going to do it. I mean, you, you ain't going to do it. Like that. You're risking you know, too much. These horses are just like, just like anything else. They're animals and they like people. You don't never know, but I'm going to say 100% when somebody take a horse through there to get show, to get checked, they in their mind know, feel like that horse can get through. And just because a horse moves, that don't mean that horse is sensitive. Oh. It's it just because that horse wanted to move because they're animals. They can move anytime they want to, just like you. I know. You know. I mean, it's just, I don't know, Jerry. I, I, I know I defend the DQPs, and, and sometimes I even defend the, the BMOs because sometimes they are right. Yes. I'm not saying they're wrong all the time, but what I am saying is for them, like one, one I looked at was back in 2014, where all year long they had inspected over 4,000 horses, over 4,000 inspections. Out of those, they had found maybe 1% that was out. However, during the first couple of days of the celebration that year, they had inspected 290 something and found out right at 10 percent of them out now that to me is just i mean it's statistically impossible you got the same horses same trainers and the same inspectors but this time the horse is out yes i mean it, it's not now i do know when it gets hot these horses lose some hair yeah but a lot of people now a lot of these trainers they use the stockings, they use the spats, they use everything to keep the action device actually off the horse yes. and protect that horse. So there's precautions taken. I just, I just hope this year that uh, when the celebration comes, if USDA shows up, that when they come in, it's inspections go the way they should. Yes, I right. hope so too. Yeah. I do too. All right, we're getting a clue that we're ready to show some victory passes, I believe. So let's go to Cornersville, Tennessee, and see what we got going. All right, primetime player in Bill Calloway for Kimberly and Perry Walden. That's a two-year-old's going to be in them two-year-olds. Oh, yeah. That'll be a good, that'll be a a lot of these horses we're looking at right now are going to be there. They're going to be at the shows. Espe especially these two-year-olds. But getting back to that, the horse industry, you figure that's what they say, 70-something show that they had at that place right there. Right. You know. I mean, this, hey, we're going to some has got a lot more years this year. That's what I'm saying. Uh, here's your show pleasure winner. Back in black in Knox Blackburn for Shamrock Farm. You know, that right there is a real good horse. Now, they got one that's a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, well, he's he, he better. He's a big yeah. time better. But that right there is a great horse. But now, he was good that night. He won oh, the yeah. class. He'd make a great amateur horse. That's that right. right there would. That's something some of these youth can look at. Right there is Jimmer's Country Girl and Carol Baxter. I tell you what, they better watch her. That, that's a nice, especially right in there. that 
This year they're naming a, a world grand champion filly. Yeah, yeah. At Jimmer's Country Girl, I'm telling you, yeah, it's out there. They better watch out for her. She's real nice now. Well, that, he's won. He's never been, she's never been beat. Amateur are open. Yeah. Now, Carol just started showing her amateur. But, but Josh has showed her, and, and I mean, he's great. Right there's Capistrano. They better watch him. He, he did great over at uh, International. Kimberly's just a, a, a good horse person. She's good for the industry. Oh, yes. And she is fantastic for the youth. Now, the, how many lead lines you got going? I got two lead lines. <laughs> two we'll lead see, lines. you gonna lead them both at the same time? No, I ain't gonna <laughs> lead them both at the same time. You're gonna lead one. I'm gonna lead one, oh, and yeah. I got Whitley Green gonna lead the other. Whitley, all right. Yeah. You got a good one. Yeah. Right here's your youth pony team player. Hayden Thomas is my man. He wants to be a horse trainer. He doesn't want to go to college. His mama's wanting him to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> and she's saying, but I think he's fishing to go to trade school. I bet you, oh, Hayden, yeah. yeah, he's smart now. He, But he, academically, he's an honor student. <laughs> But he loves these horses. I tell you, that's the thing with these horses. Once you get into it, that's something you love. I mean, hey. you live, eat, and breathe it all the time. He's liable to end up being a veterinary. You're right. <laughs> right here, honored in Texas, and John Allen Callaway from Bob Hancock. You know, that, that right there is a great four-year-old. Yeah, that is. he is. Now, Grant you, he shows amateur more than open, but he's still tough. Oh, yeah. I tell you, this year at Celebration, I believe you're going to see a lot of good classes with a bunch of good horses in it. Well, we're going to see a lot of difference, too, because we, we've got horse. If you watch right now, we've got horses that step high. They don't reach as far. Then we've got some that don't step real high, but really reach yeah. and drive with that back, back end. In. Yep. Don't tell Taylor what you're going to find. There's Forma Line and Josh Watt. That's a nice horse right there. Oh, yeah. Now, Carol Baxter bought that yes. one. Forma Line. In other words, just getting back. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. in front. 15 2 winner. That's going to be a tough class. Yeah, it will be a tough class. That'd be tough amateur and open. Oh, yeah, and both, all the yeah, divisions. Yeah, because done showed that one now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of the division at Celebration is going to be pretty tough. I mean, it ain't going to be no easy class. You. Right there is walking Mr. Charlie and Jimmy McConnell for yep. Terry and Lisa Smith. Those are some good people. They're they from are. Franklin County, yeah. Tennessee. Mm -hmm. They're over in my neck of the woods, a little bit further into Franklin County. Walk in, Mr. Charlie and Jimmy McConnell, congratulations. Mm. I tell you, this year at Celebration, them judges are going to have a hard time picking yeah. the horses that they want because every time you look around, it's going to be a good one every time I, you I pop up. I don't see how they're going to be that many unanimous, yeah. not with a caliber of horses and the, as talented as they are. You're right. I just I just don't see where there could be a ton of unanimous ties. It's just it's just too competitive. Yeah. All right, now we're going to go to horseplay. This this show had a very special place for oh, me. Oh yeah. We had some Especially good horses. Kids. We did not have the numbers, but we had the quality. Mm -hmm. We had some great competition over there. Really tight classes. Uh, I thought Joe did. A Great oh, job. Joe did I mean, a wonderful he, job. He, he did. He tied horses he got and everything them. else. He, he done a good job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The and here they are. Horse play. Kids show. There's I'm Big Enough and Maxine Be Beasley. Beth let each one of them girls pick the show they wanted to go. And uh -huh. Maxine wanted to go over there. So here they come. Good little pony right there. They better. That's another one. That pony class. Oh, yes. Every one of these are tough. That's why I say all these classes are going to be 
top-notch classes. And genetic 4G and Winky Groover for Keith two Hayes. Two-year-old right That's there. That's right, two-year-old. I dare say that everyone we see is going to be in one of them classes. Yep. And if you watch them, every one of them got a little bit different way of going. Yeah. Right here is honor to Mr. Guess and Jeremy Jensen. I might be a little biased, but I think they're going to be my kids. <laughs> Yo, you ain't biased, are you? <laughs> hey, wouldn't dream of it. It's, it make you feel good when you look back and see your son showing and doing, you know. Hey, he, he made a heck of a show yeah. over there. I know Virginia was tickled. Oh, yes. Yeah. And and Jeremy, he he had that horse. He, he, he's got a good set of hands now. Right there is I Sang Dixie and Drew Grace for Richard Garns, your three-year-old Marion Gildon winner. He did good. I that know Richard good. was tickled. Yeah. I asked Richard, I said, you want to run that? I said, I don't think there's enough good video of that horse. I said, you ain't seen what we got. <laughs> and I sent it to him. He said, yeah, I think you're right. We need to run it. Now, when you get Miss Linda, his wife, to brag on one, and you got to be doing real good because it's hard to please her. But she's so she really liked this one right here. Now, I, tell you, I thought it did great. It, it is. It is nice. I love a bay anyway. Yeah. But there, I'm I'm very fond of this one right here. Yeah. To tell you the truth, because I mean he he took one the counter class and the amateur, and then they said, well, hey, just put him back in the state. So uh, they go out with a set of roses, change his makeup a little bit, powder him off a little bit, That's right. run him back through inspection one more time, and send him back in there for the big man to ride. Well, let's just tell you how much athlete, is. yeah, what kind of athlete these horses are, you know? Yeah, but what gets me, that horse was inspected four times yeah. mm -hmm. at one show. Did great, did real great. So I'm I'm tickled. Yeah. We had the quality of the horses. I'd been happy if we had more horses, but we had the quality, and that that means more that, than anything. That's right. When you got the quality the, of horses, the good horses. This is showing. Stands were happy. Yeah. The whole works. Let's go to to the summer sizzler, because that that was a good show. Yeah. And I mean that was just started up a three-day weekend like we got this week. Mm -hmm. We got three good shows this week. I'm looking forward to all three of them. Oh, I am too. All um, right. Right there, Super Bowl MVP and B.B. Beasley. That's a, that horse there is a steady now. He's, he walks and shakes, and that little girl, she really likes Again this weekend, right yep. before the celebration. That's right. A lot of people will. There's a diamond in the rips in Lexi Smith, or Walden and Smith. That's another example of Kimberly Walden. Yes. Let's see, we got Friday, uh, Thursday night this week, we got uh, the Belfast, Belfast show. Belfast Horse Show. And uh, Belfast, I believe, we've got Nathan Clark judging, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then we got Fedville. And that's Scotty Brooks. Brooks. Yes. And then we've got Wartrace, and we got Mr. Gibbons at Wartrace. Uh -huh. So, right here's I Am March Madness, three-year-old stallions. 
That's another one of the Debbie and Billy Woods horses right there, buddy. They got some good ones. Oh yeah, they do have some good horses. I want everybody to pray for Billy. He's having a little battle with cancer and uh, I'd like to see everybody pray for him because he, if you've never met Billy Woods, he's just uh, a refreshing drink of water. Now he really <laughs> is because he's just a super good guy. Just he, he loves the horses. That's it in a nutshell. And Debbie is, Debbie just thanks the world of him. That's a nice horse right there. Oh yeah. That's a basketball horse. Oh yeah. Guarantee it. That, that was a good show over there. Oh now, yeah, they, it was a good they show. They got it done, buddy, big time. And from there we went to uh, Marshall County. Marshall County was a good oh, show. Oh, it was a, a big show. Oh, yeah, I mean, they, they had a bunch of good horses in them. They had some nice there. horses over yeah. there. They uh, you, you can, anytime you go to Lewisburg, you're going to see some talent. Because oh, yeah. it seems like everybody always says, I'm going to bust him out in Lewisburg. Mm -hmm. They had quite a few horses. They got a, had a lot of quality horses, but they had a, a the numbers, too. Oh, yeah. Now, they did. They had a big show. There's Link people. done a good job over there. I show. thought Link judged a good, yeah, he good show. He, uh, he, he just, he, Link is Link. He's going to watch what's going yeah. on. He's going to pick what he thinks the best, and that's going to be it. Yeah, that's right. So you can't knock what Link did. Right there's Daybreak and Knox Blackbird for Teresa Kincaid. Now, she ain't going to be showing that horse during celebration. There's going to be a young lady's going to be astride that uh -huh. horse. Knox has done it since he's come back. He's really made an impact oh, yeah. in providing quality for us. Right here, it's the medalist and Eli Cunningham. Your youth led him under. Mr. Eli is going to come over on Sunday morning, the 28th, and be on the show with us. Yeah, he's going to keep you straight. He yeah. told me he's straightening <laughs> you out. Tell you what, that young man can flat ride a horse. Oh, yeah, now. he can. He can. He can, he can get with it. I know his grandfather, boy, he, he he's really into it. Oh, yeah, he, he loved them horses. James, James Wilson gets him in there. Yeah. And look who I am, Casey Wright. Now, this is one, another one of them two-year-olds. Yep. Now, look right. at the way this one goes. Uh-huh. He walks and reaches, walks and He's not breaking yeah. real high, but he's getting the job done. Got to walk. Right here's Dark Rain and Taylor Walters. Now that was my pick right there. Yeah. I thought Taylor made a great show. That just goes show you don't always agree with a good judge. Mm -hmm. The Paddock Master and Dahlia Smith Har. For Smith and Har, you grandmature ladies, mares, and gildings. Say what, Kenny, you know, he had that quick market. Yeah. He, he got out of it. Said he's going to let someone else worry about getting up and make sure them gas pumps were pumping. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't blame him. I had a little convenience store one time, and I begged people to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it gone. Dahlia's is a good rider. Oh, yes, she is. She is. She gets it done. I'm going to tell you what, people. Y'all better be watching this guy at the celebration this year, especially in that four-year-old division. This horse right here, he, 
fantastic. Yes, I he, mean, he was good, real good. That gonna be another tough class right there. Yes, I mean, sir. I, well, Kerry, I, I just thought I watched Kerry go around through there, and I said, yeah. man, he just. He, he rode his horse the whole time. Yes, he did. And he got it done. Yeah, he really did. Yeah, a lot of coaches on the rail. Everywhere you look up, somebody will tell them right there. And they, you can always tell a good one because everybody going to coach you. Everybody going to be hollering out yeah. there. They want their two cents for it. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. Hey, he didn't need no coach. No, he didn't. Old Troubadour. Man told me the other day, he said, that horse got such a back end, all he's got to do is drive, let his front end go where it wants to. That's right. <laughs> Timing and reaching and oh, yeah. walking, buddy. Tyler looked good on him. Mm-hmm. And right there, Joe Pond, Winky Groover for Strickland and Porterfield. There you That'd go. That'd be another interesting class right there, the state yeah. class. They have a bunch of good ones in there. Got her done. Got her done. Well, that finished up Marshall County. Yep. So the next, our next stop was uh, Pulaski. But I tell you what, before we go to Pulaski, you need to do your job. We got some more commercials coming up. <laughs> Good boy, <laughs> you did it right. <laughs> The Jake Jacobs family asks you to support the team of Jake Jacobs and Grayton Beach as they compete for top honors during the 84th celebration in the amateur four-year-old division. Again to win started his career under the guidance of Herbert Derrickson, winning his first outing as a two-year-old in Manchester, Tennessee. After a great two-year-old season, Jen would win his first outing as a three-year-old. He was then purchased by Harold Roberts. Harold won a competitive amateur class with him, then turned the reins over to trainer Blaise Picard, who would win both the World Championship and World Grand Championship three-year-old classes. This would be followed by Kendra Myers winning the amateur four-year-old Grand Championship, and then Jen would go on to win World Championships in both amateur and open show pleasure divisions. With World and World Grand Championships in both open and amateur divisions, the decision was made to stand this talented black stallion in honor of the man who saw his greatness, Harold Roberts. A Jen Dwin is now standing at Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Make an appointment to breed your mare today, 931-680-0897. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse. But I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now, for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communications. The Tennessee Walking Horse is a perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. World Champion in Amateur and Open Competition, four times Amateur World Grand Champion, and 2019 World Grand Champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dow at Fantasy Farms in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 
for breeding information. And welcome back. Yes. All right, we're going to take a trip to Pulaski, the red carpet. Now, they, they had a good show oh, yeah, up they there. Did. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people up there, a lot of... They, they always have a good show, though. I yeah. mean, they, every year the red carpet will have a good show with quality horses, and they did the same thing again this year. So This show has been going on for years, too. Yes, yes. There's, there's Maxine again. Youth pony winner. I tell you what, she's won a bunch this year. Mm -hmm. And she's capable of winning the celebration. Very yep. capable. Right there's Kid Can Do, and this time it was Tyler on him. Yes. That's one that Robert and Tyler both were showed during the celebration, probably. They've done that before. Nice one. Oh yeah. Kid can do. Robert Dor cut him a new ride. Oh yeah. Georgia, yeah. Florida line. Mm -hmm. Right here is Manning and Taylor Walters. That's a good horse right that is there. A good horse. Every, he always makes a good show. Always. He just does everything the way you want him to do it. Every time you look at him, he, he's doing that same walk. Yep. You know, he's a nice horse. Well, Taylor's molded with him too. Oh, now yeah. she, she knows how to handle him. Right here is I Am A Gentleman and Michael Wright for Debbie and Billy Woods, your three-year-old stallion winner. David and has got some good horses. Oh, yeah. Now they really do. You can tell it. Every time you look up, they have two or three that wins all the time. That's it. Always. Yep. Right there is Formal Line and Carol Baxter. That's why I'm saying you're going to have to watch her in that 15 to it underclass. Because yeah. she's got one that can get down there with them now. And I tell you what, she rides him from the beginning to the end. She does. She don't slack one time. She's, she's as good a rider as any lady we've got in there. Oh, yeah. Of a lot of men that we've got in the show ring today that she can get it done. Well, she's been riding for years and years. Yeah. Right there is El Hombre in black and Jake Jacobs. Right there is going to be a big, that is. big deal in, during the celebration now. Oh, it does it so easy. It's just like he's laid back and yeah. just taking that Saturday evening stroll. Uh -huh. One of them Sunday drivers. Brothers, that's right. <laughs> it makes it look easy. Yep. All right, honor and remember. I don't know whether Dan is sending a signal to everybody or what, but that's the second time he's won a state class yeah. this year. That was real nice over at that nice. show right there. He was. He's a good one. Kim Lewis just tickles me. She says, I've raised enough kids to know a four-year-old horse is just like a teenager. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, buddy, he, he is now. He, he's right. Looks good. All 
All right. You know, Jerry, every year right before the celebration, or right before this weekend, we like to show winners from the year prior, especially when you got three nights. Yes. Mm -hmm. And every year we have the same three shows right before the celebration. And then we will show that. And then later on, we show the contender series, yeah. which is just a bunch of victory passes is all it is. But uh, this week we've got uh, some victory passes from last year. And I'm just wondering how many we will see tomorrow night in Belfast that we saw last year in Belfast. Yes. And I'm going to bet we'll see several. Yeah. But you, you remember what we're fixing to oh, see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll we'll discuss it if if they win again or even if they show up. Yeah. If they don't show up, we'll, we'll let them know that we missed them. These three shows here was, man, I remember growing up, they, I know Belfast and Wartrace especially. Hey, they were always was, huge. I mean, it was always huge. huge. And I mean, yeah. This was the Belfast Lions Club 2021. I am Mighty Jose and Shane Porterfield, far Shane Porterfield, your amateur 15 to an under winner. Now Shane's a super oh, yeah. good guy. Uh, Shane is he, a good he guy. Gets, he gets involved oh, with yeah. it now. Yep. I am Mighty Jose. Taking it to the bank. Right there's the Yellowstone and Jamie Lawrence for Kay Easterling. Your four-year-old canter winner. He may be there this year, but he I'll won't see. be in that class. <laughs> no. A lot of these have to move up to another class. That is a nice looking horse. Getting it done. Jamie's got him a new ride now. Oh, yeah. He's got the mm -hmm. coach. Right here is Tea Time Charlie and Knox Blackburn for the Anthony Joseph family. Three year old stallion winner. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of Anthony Joseph family this year. Yeah, I know. I really am. I know his daughter can flat show a oh, horse yes, she now. Oh, can. She can. All right. That was from Belfast last year. And that was, that was yeah. they had a good show down there. Oh, they had a real good show. Well, from there, we headed over to Fedville, Tennessee, and watched them. And I'm sure that there's going to be some that from that lap, from, Bell, from Fedville last year, that will be over there this year. Yeah. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm thinking that we'll see a Philly that Jerry won on last year that uh, Jerry Bailey did that maybe they'll show us a three-year-old this year. Maybe. Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see. Right there she is, Sable 21 and Jerry Beatty for Reagan Hartman, your two-year-old Marin Gildan winner. Now she's matured a lot since last yeah. year, and I believe Debbie Eichler renamed her Sister Sledge. Sister Sledge. I believe that's the name she put on her. But I tell you what, she's got a presence about her. When you look at her, yeah. she's drop dead gorgeous and gets it done. I always like the Fedville show because they got the good chicken plates over there. <laughs> got that barbecue chicken. Yeah. Here he is, Kid Can Do and Robert Dort. I would say you probably see him. Now, he was an amateur two-year-old stallion last year. Now, yeah. this year he's a gilded. Yeah. Mm. 
a lot of things happen in a year. Oh yeah, <laughs> a lot of things. We get some of us get a year older, and some lose part of them, their self. Yeah, get a little lighter. <laughs> I've got two that experience. <laughs> Right there, drop a line in Jordan Dempsey for Gleghorn and Teal, your park performance winner. You know, I haven't seen Charles Gleghorn any this year either. No, uh -uh. I've seen him once or twice it's earlier in the year, but I don't know whether he's fell in love and started going to the movies or what. <laughs> Tell you what, that young lady right there sits a great yeah, saddle. Yeah, she sits a good saddle. Good hands, and yeah. she, she's a great rider. Really is. Right there, Slim Cash and Knox Blackburn, your three-year-old stallion winner for Bruce and Robin McDonald. Yeah. Bruce and Robin have good horses. Yeah, they have really good horses. I mean, they horses. do. Yeah. Now, they'll sell one every now and then, but top to bottom, they got good ones. Yeah. And that finished out the remedy. Mm -hmm. You can tell it gets a little slim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That the people come in because they're getting ready for celebration. That's right. And I don't blame them. You got big, big things coming during the celebration. Yes. Very mm -hmm. big things. But Jerry, you got to do your job again. Well, I guess we're gonna go back to commercial. <laughs> I like the way you put that. We're gonna go back to commercials. <laughs> The Jake Jacobs family asks for your support for R.M. Kellett as he glides Mr. True Blue toward the championship honors in the four-year-old counter division at the 84th Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. I can you one, so uh, get your cat off from here, sit yourself in the rooms. Want everybody to know the rooms of the games we're here today? So, you so, guys, so, so. So, Jimmy, there's your black stud coat by I am three time world grand champion. Well, I am Jose, is his daddy. There's opportunity. The bid 27. Where you at, Mark? 26, 27, 27. Last call. When you get out to it, done. So, so, you got it, 2600, 2600 here, and then 56 and a half. 5600. Got it, got it, got it, got it, six. Fifty five hundred, you bought a fifty five hundred. And so, left hundred, Mark Hall, take it. Oh, left hundred, you bought a fifty five hundred. So, 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 you break one, break the next one. That's the real deal, guys, right here. Opportunity is knocking right here, Annie Johnson. Here's a horse to take it home. Right that said this, but so, 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 you bought it. Allie Jo Jacobs asks for your support when she enters the 84th celebration with her performance horses in the 11 and under division seeking top honors with Cole Hahn. Allie Jo Jacobs will then be aboard her world grand champion, I'm Coach Cal, in her second 11 and under class. Ali Jo will be entering the 11 and under pony division aboard the Haas and once again asks for your support. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports, they even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much.
Watch El Hombre in Black as he carries Jake Jacobs in his quest to wear the roses in the four-year-old amateur stallion class during the 84th Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> All righty. Okay, we're going to go to War Trace, Tennessee, and that is the oldest horse show around. Yes. Eagle Will used to compete with them a little bit, but Eagle was one way. And I tell is this the 114th? I'm, I'm going to say so. It's pretty close. I believe it's 114th or 115th. I, I should have checked that before we got on air. I just didn't think about it because I knew it was just older than he could, yeah. but mm -hmm. he, I mean, uh, Rip Van Winkle yes. wasn't that old. <laughs> right there's Show Pleasure Amateur Reserve winner. He made a great show down there. Yeah. But he, he, he'd been watching the Minions with his grandkids this year. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's going to the movies. They got him hooked on movies, buddy. You got a fan out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. People just like Shane because he, he's oh, just yeah. a laid back, he's a little laid back good nice guy. guy. And here's title defense, Samantha Green. You know, I've, I've seen her get more reserves when she should have got the blue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Than any one young lady in the industry. Oh, yeah. I have to rival her with Debbie Eichler getting. I would say you probably see that horse back over there this weekend somewhere. I would I would think we'd see him yeah. over there, maybe yeah. at celebration. A lot yeah, of you see him at celebration, yeah. Because he's a good one. He's a good one. And here's he's unleashed in Jeff Green, you walking horse state class mm -hmm. winner for Bedford Walking Horse Farm. Jeff got it done. Yep. Yeah. Right. We haven't seen him this year. No. Mm -hmm. But we'll have we'll have three good shows. Oh yeah. And then we're going to have a lot, a lot of video promotion for the celebration because I'm looking forward to this year's celebration. Oh, me too. I got me a feeling too. that it's going to, I, I just got a feeling it's going to be one big show. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, think I believe it's going to be a real good show. I think they'll have a lot more horses than normal. It's just from watching what's happening all year long because all honesty, Jerry, we have got some competitive classes. Oh, yeah. We got a bunch of competitive, just, competitive uh, classes. We got some some top talent. We got some talented horses that's out there that's showing. In the, in the past, you could just about say, well, this is going to do it, this is going to do it. The, the championship, world grand champion Tennessee walking horse, going to be a knockdown drag out. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be, there's no clear cut winner in the four year old counter class you've got different ones that you can name that that just a tad better or better than the rest of them and then the other night here comes old troubadour no, yeah that's right and and that that kind of made everybody stand up and look and say whoa wait a minute here that's comes that because he took the two-year-old world grand championship by storm yeah and now we we've, we've got him and but we've got a lot of, of other horses out there that true blue just as steady as you can yep. get and you and you and you got kobe kobe uh, mm -hmm. and then i don't know what they're going to do but dixie road yeah dixie road i mean dixie roads that's a walking oh, pistol yeah, right there so you look around and then mark one mark one uh jimmy you never can count jimmy out no jimmy will lay back and then look up and man here he comes like a banshee boy so you, there's just a lot going on in the industry yeah. at, at our youth division. Oh yeah. 
it's going to be tough. That pony division, when you start looking at ponies like this, I am busting loose. Home, yeah. Won a state class the other night. So you, you, from top to bottom, you just got horses in every division. That, what, what's some of the divisions that you're thinking of? Well, I got some lead line ponies that I got on the yeah. show. I got some um, some amateur horses. I got some show pleasure horses. I mean, the show pleasure classes, all division uh, of that show pleasure I, classes I, is I, big. They're they're in a show pleasure class that that's there's a break anywhere. That's right. You got the you got the four and under show pleasure class as a big class, and mm -hmm. all of the mare, the amateurs. I mean, that's I mean that's a real big. Well, that's class right cotton. there. Yeah. Well, the amateur eleven under. Yeah, eleven under. Now, the eleven under. under. I was talking to a lady today. We was talking that you you got world champions are going to go in that eleven and under class that's already won a world championship. Yeah. So the avenue there is to try to dodge them and go into the novice. That's right. Eleven and under, mm -hmm. and then you got your your but your pony class. They just there's so many good ponies out here, and. I'm just, it, from top to bottom, one of our toughest divisions to me is going to be the three-year-old Yes. And, and the two-year-old. Those are going to be two top, I mean, there's going to be some great horses there's gonna in some, there. There's going to be some real great horses in there. Now, to me, my toughest class, I'll say, is the lead line division. Well, because yeah. you got all them good ponies <laughs> in, you got all them pretty little girls, pretty little boys that's out there, the grandmothers, all, all, mamas all the mamas out there. And I mean, it's <laughs> it's 10 to 12 top lead line ponies that's in there. Well, there's only one safe judge. Yeah, that's right. And that's Amy Trimble. Now, she, <laughs> she's safe. These women ain't going to flog her. Yeah. But now them poor guys, <laughs> them I mean, poor that's, guys now, I mean, they, they, they out there. You know, that's that's a real people don't realize, but that's a real tough class right there. Well, it is because I mean, you got so many good ones out there. Well, I'm going to tell you what's tough about it to me. Number one is tough on these kids because you look out there and you watch. It's all about the rider. That's it's right. It's supposed to be about the pony. The pony's got a lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's about the way the the person on that saddle handles their self. Mm -hmm. And they set up there watching, looking between the ears. I mean, that is a, to me, that is an equitation class. It is an equitation I mean, class. That's pretty much what it is, the equitation. Those kids that's up there that's smiling and doing it, those are the ones that I look at the hardest. Now, you'll have some up there that's just happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Justin and Janae's two boys, they, they, they're having they a ball. Have a, they have they a blast. They could care less yeah. about that blue that, ribbon. That, they have a blast. They're now. just having a good time they every do. time they do it. Yeah. But some of these now these kids they work hard so they're they're wanting to uh they're they're wanting to win yeah mm -hmm. and their mamas are wanting to, to win. win that's right and i ain't getting in none of them <laughs> 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 tell you what we're gonna we're gonna let everybody go but we will see everybody next week with another episode of water horse <laughs> see you later see you later <laughs>